supplements, a pill or powder that will make you healthier. It can help your immune system, muscle building, weight loss, energy levels, and even mental health. But most people don't know that there is dark stuff in these pills that is dangerous for you and your loved ones. And that's the government's fault. Today, we will explore what is this dark stuff and the dark business of supplements. How easy it is to start a supplement business. And at the end, we will see are supplements even worth it? Supplements are one of the fastest growing industries on the planet. It is estimated that in 2027, the industry will be worth $230 billion. The most interesting thing is that this is a relatively new business and it has mass growth each year. Start of the business was in the 1980s and 1990s. Commercials, flyers, it had crazy marketing. By 2006, more than 50% of Americans took them. And in 2011, Americans spent $30 billion in supplements. Today, it's even better. The industry is huge across the globe. More than 43% of Asians use supplements. And Asia has 3.5 billion people. We can say that most of the planet consumes supplements. The most popular category is vitamins and minerals. These are multivitamins, calcium tablets, and vitamin C tablets. The second most popular category is sports nutrition. Products like pre-workout, energy drinks, and protein powders. Other popular categories include weight loss supplements, herbal supplements, and omega-free fish oil. When scientists took some of these products and tested them, they saw that 92.1% of the supplements tested contained bacteria and 86.8% fungal contamination. If you don't understand these two words, it's bad. And it gets even worse. They tested a few thousand products and 28% of them had some sort of illegal substances, better said steroids. Valerian, marketed as a natural sleep aid, has been linked to liver damage. Kratom has been linked to salmonella poisoning and addiction issues. Neptune's fix has been linked to seizures, loss of consciousness, and death. Now, how is that even possible? Answer, the government. We said that the beginning of the industry was in the 80s and the 90s. And as we know, when a new industry rises and make banks, they don't let the government regulate them so easily. Thanks to the lobbyists. So what is in the law? The FDA doesn't regulate the supplement market at all. You could buy a vitamin that has 0% of the vitamin you think you're buying. Unlike prescription drugs, which go under huge testing before they can be sold to the public, supplements fall under a different category. They fall under food. That means no one will be responsible for side effects and long-term diseases, which will come in your later years. Another concern regarding supplements is the false sense of security they can provide. Therefore, depending only on supplements can result in a long-term health risk. So why doesn't the FDA regulate this multi-billion dollar industry now? It's different times. Well, due to the lack of evidence required for safety and effectiveness claim. Some of the key players in the US dietary supplement market are these companies. Recognize some? In other countries, it's similar. Brazil considers supplements as food products termed food for physical activity practitioners but can only contain vitamins, minerals, carbohydrates, proteins, fats, or branched-chain amino acids. In Japan, supplements are required to be marked as food for specific health uses. In China, they are referred to as health foods. In the Philippines, supplements are defined as processed food products. Indonesia considers supplements as functional foods. The European Union defines supplements as foodstuffs to supplement the normal diet but have a nutritional or psychological effect. One of the reasons this is so dangerous is because it's not really hard to start a supplement company. You don't need millions. According to this article, you just need $5,000, but it will be easier if you have $10,000. With that, you will get 150 units, website, insurance, and design labels. Everything you need. Companies purchase their raw materials from countries where the legislation on safety and quality control isn't that restrictive. Another aspect that determines the price is synthetic or natural ingredients. Using synthetic ingredients can save money because their production costs are low. But these substances doesn't have the same quality as the natural ones. COVID boosted the online sales. The US sales increased by 20.8% to $14.3 billion in 2020. In the business, there is 30 to 50% profit margins, which means if you sell a supplement product for $50, 
and when you pay manufacturing, packaging and shipping, you can get a profit of $15 to $25 per unit. But hey, that's a $230 billion industry. But it's driven by few factors. People today are more health conscious and are willing to invest in supplements to improve their health. Additionally, the aging population is creating a higher demand for products that come with age-related health concerns. Rest of the factors are the influence of social media, athletes, fitness influencers, and wellness trends. On social media, people are telling you that zinc is required for essential body functions. But they don't tell you that overdosing on zinc can be wasteful and harmful. Probiotics are good, but they don't tell you that they lack conclusive evidence for various health conditions. Vitamin D is good for you, but megadosing vitamin D can damage your liver. I mean, I'm an expert. I got all this information from various medical sources, but I want to tell you that there is tons of these fake gurus and you need to be careful. There is also research and doctors that say supplements are a waste of money because most people take recommended doses of vitamins, etc. That's because of a varied diet. Calcium is good for your bones, but you can get calcium from food like sardines. You only need to take supplements if you are in a deficiency. If your body doesn't produce enough, if you don't take recommended dosages, and if you are a strong vegan. You can find out what you need with a simple blood test. Iron deficiency can be common, especially in pregnant women, and supplementation may be necessary. Magnesium can be good for you. If you started going to the gym and your muscles hurt, magnesium can reduce that. In summary, some people need supplementation to live a healthy lifestyle, but most people don't. Now this wasn't a video to make you believe that you don't need supplements. It was meant to show you the business of supplements. I'm not a medical professional and all this research I found on various sources. It is important for you to be aware of regulations and what impacts the growth of the industry. Take supplements at your own risk. If you enjoyed this video how the business of supplement works and you enjoy entrepreneurial success stories, check out our channel. We have tons of stuff about that. Also subscribe. <laughs>